Hey everybody, I'm Sean Duffy from Wisconsin 7th Congressional District, which is the center, northern, and western part of the great state of Wisconsin. I want to welcome everybody to our first podcast, not to be confused with a podcast. Um, I'm honored today for our uh, first time trying to bring the insights and viewpoints of policymakers in Washington, D.C. back to Wisconsin. Uh, with our first guest, the great honor goes to Will Hurd from Texas 23. Um, Will has uh, probably one of the coolest districts in Texas, which uh, is uh, one of the biggest districts in the country. It is. But not only that, does he serve the country um, as a U.S. congressman, he also served the country as a CIA agent. Welcome, Will. Thanks for I being did. here. Well, thanks for letting me be the first. It's, I'm glad to be here to talk with everybody back in Wisconsin. So tell us about your district. Tell us about, tell us about southern Texas. So, so, so my district goes from San Antonio, Texas to El Paso. San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the country. Most people know it for the San Antonio Spurs. And, you know, my district's 29 counties, two time zones, 820 miles of the border. It takes 10 and a half hours to drive from one corner of the district to the other at 80 miles an hour, which is actually the speed limit in most of the district. Nice. And, but my, my, chief of fa my chief of staff found out last weekend it's not the speed limit in all of the district. Right? You got a speeding and, ticket, and I take he it? Did, he did. Were you in the car? I was not. I was not, thank thankfully. Hopefully he got the ticket and did get out of it? No, he, he did. Okay. He did. So, um, but it, it, it is, it's a, it's a, I grew up there. I was born and raised. Um, in San Antonio, so it's pretty cool uh, representing my, my hometown. And, and how long were you in the CIA? So I was in the CIA for nine and a half years, and I, so I went to Texas A&M University, and my degree, my undergraduate degree was in computer science, and um, I'm a freshman in college, I had never been outside of Texas, and I'm walking across campus and I see a sign that says, take two journalism classes in Mexico City for $425, and I had $450 in my bank account, like I'm out of here. I went to Mexico, went to right? Mexico. <laughs> exactly. And it was it was a great experience. I loved being in another culture. I thought it was cool seeing things I only read about in books. I had an international studies as a minor. And the first class I took, I had a guest lecturer who was this former CIA tough guy and told the most amazing stories. And that began my interest. So nine and a half years in the CIA, what kind of work did you do? Can you tell us that? Yeah, sure. I was the dude. I, no, I wouldn't have to kill you. I wouldn't have to kill okay. you. I wouldn't want to do that. Just I don't want checking. folks in Wisconsin to be upset with me. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah. Or my wife. Right. <laughs> or your wife, exactly. So I, um, I did two years. So I, right when I graduated um, from A&M, I did two years of what I used to call our super secret CIA training facility called The Farm. Yep. Now it's on Google Maps. And I did uh, two years in India, two years in, in Pakistan, two years in, in New York City, then a year and a half in Afghanistan. And I was the dude in the back alleys collecting intelligence on threats to the homeland. Is it counterintelligence work? Well, it, it, it was. The it stuff was, that movies are made it, of? It is the stuff that you movies like are made Bauer, of. You like the Jack Bauer, but overseas <laughs> yeah, kind of guy? Absolutely. I was the guy overseas. Look, so, so, we, so the CIA, the National Clandestine Service, that's the unit I was in. We're the collectors of last resort. If you can't get a piece of information any other way, you call the National Clandestine Service to the CIA. And you guys pop in there and, and we you go get, in it. And get it. So they'll say um, the Haqqani Network, which is a part of the Taliban in Afghanistan. We need to better understand the plans and intentions of that group. We had to go out and recruit the spies and steal the secrets in order to, to, in order to figure that so out. So how do you get from the CIA to Congress? So I had to brief uh, members of Congress also. And, right. um, and once you brief them, you still thought you wanted to run for Congress? Well, How does that, that's, that, that, that was that the whole, that warning was the whole sign. thing. The red light right. should have been turning and going, I need, <laughs> right. I need a different career. Not, not everybody is like Mr. Duffy, right? right? <laughs> and, um, and, and, and have your talents. And I was pretty shocked by some of the caliber of our elected officials. And my mama said, you need to part of the problem, a part of the that's solution. solution. And so I, I moved back to San Antonio and ran for Congress. And I lost. <laughs> I lost a runoff by 700 votes. Oh gosh! And I know. I don't how many it, votes cast? Uh, in that in that election, it was probably it was a primary, so it was probably about uh, almost 30,000. So 700 seems like a lot, but in congressional races, that is a squeaker. It's it's tiny, and, and it's worse because the two months after I lost, I'd be at the grocery store pushing my cart, and people would come up to me and say, "Hey, heard how's the campaign going?" I was like, "I lost." And like, "Oh shucks, me and my wife forgot to we would vote." would have voted for yeah. you. I, I ran to 740 people uh, that, that, that said did, right. right. Yeah. So I, I, I wrote those names down. But it, what was, it gave me an opportunity, though, um, to join a consulting firm, and I helped start a cybersecurity company. And so we basically broke into banks, stole their money, and show them how we did it. 
And it was a great experience to understand the threats that um, businesses are under, the threats that you know Americans' information is under. So and basically, so great. but going from the government now to the private sector and and helping the homeland by securing data, but just as a private citizen versus a CIA agent. So 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 now you're in Washington. Um, what legislation are you working on? What what drives Will Hurd? Um, to get up every morning and go fight the good fight uh, to reform the way this place works. Sure. Um, I, I'm sure you're like me. We've done a lot of parades, right? Yeah. And, and I've never seen a lot um, of parades. I've, I've never seen someone at a parade hold up a sign that says IT procurement, right? IT procurement is not Maybe a sexy Texas, topic. But yeah, not in, <laughs> yeah, not not in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. But, but here's the reality, Sean. The, n the federal government is spending $90 billion, that's with a B on purchasing IT goods and services, and 75% of that is on old, outdated stuff. It's old outrageous, systems. it's outrageous. And you know, when you, when you so tell people that. that why, I mean, why, why would we use our money so poorly? I know it's not yeah. shocking for people to go, you know, you hear the stories of you spent 400 bucks on a hammer or 500 right. bucks for a right. toilet seat, but I mean, with, with how important this is to our security, how could we, would we be buying old technology with such a large portion of the budget? So part of it is the whole notion in the federal government that if you don't use it, you lose it, right? right. You know, and, and you have to, because the digital infrastructures in the government are so big, um, you, can't, you can't modernize and the money you save, you can't use it. And right. so there's no, there's no motivation um, to save money. There's no motivation to modernize. There's no motivation to introduce you know, the, the widget from the two guys or two gals in a garage mm -hmm. that's going to you know, secure our information and be a third cheaper than the stuff that we're using. So that's, that's what I'm working on. And we just had a piece of legislation um, pass the House uh, a number of months ago. It passed the Senate on the, on the National Defense Authorization Act. And it will probably get signed in the law in but December. I think it's one of these, we all deal in our own special spaces on different committees. But it's, I mean, information technology and making sure we secure American information. I think our constituents think that we are at the cutting edge of technology, that we are doing the best and we have the brightest and we are the most secure, and per your comment, um, no. I'm sure a lot of other sectors, whether it's you know banking or um, other companies, are way more secure than we are in the federal government. No, it, it absolutely is true, and, and look, listen, but, but we have the problem. Everybody knows OPM now, the Office right. of Personnel Management, because they got my information on yeah, it. Yeah, they, they got yours? mine as yeah. well too. Um, they, 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 you know, 24 million records of people right. that went through security clearance, right? That's crazy. But then we deal with Equifax just right. now, and, and guess what? Nobody in the United States of America opted in That's right. to Equifax. Yeah. And so it was no one not knew a who choice. they were before Nobody they knew. found out that their information was hacked. Right. And, and what's, what's dangerous about this Equifax breach is that we're not going to see the impact for months, if not years, because it changes how we do authentication, meaning um, how someone can confirm you are indeed who you say you are. And, and, and that stuff was used, you know, if you forget your password, sometimes the security um, and, um, question is based on your credit history. Yeah. Now the bad guys have access to that. But, what you, but, but, it's, but I think what we have to do too is you have to give people the ability, families and individuals, to secure their own credit. And we should have it as easy as getting on an app and swiping to freeze your credit. So no one can access credit in your name. And if you want to, listen, if you're going to go get a car or a house or even an iPhone, you can go back into your phone, unfreeze your credit, Sorry. get the loan. Um, once it's done, refreeze it. But we don't have that technology, and that's the work that I think we have to do to empower people to make sure they lock down right. their own credit so they can't be taken advantage of. Advantage of. I want to quick, um, I just would do some rapid fire questions for you. I sleep in my office. Okay. Um, I don't like it. Um, it's not fun, but do you sleep in your office as well? I, I don't. Um, I, when I first you. got here, I, I lived in a basement apartment. Um, and it, and it um, flooded You're not twice. living a dream like yeah, that right no, now? No, <laughs> it flooded twice. So now I moved into an apartment above ground. And so I have a little small apartment uh, here in Washington. So you're a little more comfort um, oriented. That's great. So uh, we have great opportunity to embarrass ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, plenty of opportunity for that. So any funny or embarrassing stories in your tenure here in Washington as a congressman? Well, this week, Make us laugh. yeah, this week I was supposed to participate in a panel on cybersecurity, and we're getting lined up to to go out on stage, and I had to go to the bathroom, and so I thought we had a couple. You know, I thought we had more time than we did, and so I ran to the bathroom, and everybody else went on stage, 
and the moderator was like, where's, where's your, mic your microphone Harris? was not, was it? <laughs> no, it no, wasn't. That it airplane wasn't. Yeah, scene. So, so yeah, so that was, that was having to hustle on there. That was, that comes to the first, you know, top of my mind. He's in the restroom, folks. Uh, give the congressman yeah, a break. Right, right? Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully it didn't exactly. take very long. No. All right. So um, in Wisconsin, one of our great industries, so we, 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 have, we have the best ginseng um, in the world okay. that comes from Marathon County. We have great manufacturing, but we love our dairy products um, and we're proud of our cheese. What is your favorite cheese? So I would almost say I, you know, I like cheese in different forms, right? Like I like I like taking a big block of cheese and cutting it up and putting it on a cracker for for a snack. Um, being from South Texas, I love queso. So melted cheese, if it's melted, I'm gonna stick a you know a tortilla chip in it. Um, but but I would say um, nachos, the cheese on nachos compuestos, whatever kind of cheese Isn't that, that queso? is. Doesn't they put the queso on yeah, there? Yeah. So no? so a, a nacho compuesto is. Every individual chip has the meat and the salsa ah, okay. and the cheese on top of so it. So my wife is Mexican American. I'll have to right. ask her that because she hasn't. She is. She's given me the queso, but I haven't had that cheese yet. Yeah. Okay. So you know, this is my trivia question. So, um, cheese curds are big okay. in Wisconsin. Can do, do you know um, what indicators there are to tell if a cheese curd is fresh? I do not know. They squeak. They squeak. How do, you bite, you you, when you bite into them, they squeak. That's when they, you know they're fresh. You know it's fresh. That's right. Okay. So I'll now when you come to, to Wisconsin, you'll know if you're I'll getting have to do it. old cheese curds or, or news, uh, new cheese curds. Okay, so can, can we do a cheese curds like taste test to we see could. if we can determine whether so it's fresh so, or so, not? So, so my Would wife, you be able to do that? Oh, I could tell. But so my wife came to Wisconsin from Arizona. Right. Um, and she thought cheese curds were absolutely the grossest things. So mm. this is deep. This is a cheese curd battered and deep fried. And right. she saw it and said, that is the grossest Right. Most disgusting food ever. She said that for three years, and then she tried one, and she said, "This is the best food ever. She I love cheese curds." No, no, that's awesome. Yeah, so they're... when you come, when I come up there, we'll do it. Do good cheese curds. That's right. So what squeaks? The cheese. Okay. Put the cheese in your mouth. You put it in with the cheese. Actually, squeaks. It's so fresh. Gotcha. You got You got to taste it and hear it. Is that only with cheese curds, cheese curds, or is that is that curds. like normal cheese? Like no, just I, cheese curds. Just cheese curds. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So now. Um, some might argue that we have not been as productive as you and I would like, mm -hmm. and I think you and I would both agree with that. Um, but whether we look at you know what happens in sports or in culture and TV or in Congress, what in the world of Will Hurd uh, gives you an axe to grind? I did lumberjack sports, so I got to gotcha, my axe to gotcha, grind for Will gotcha. Hurd. What are you angry about? What frustrates you about what you're seeing um, in in the world? So I, I what what my axe to grind is that. We spend more time fighting each other mm -hmm. than talking about what unites us, right? Um, and, and I think way more unites us as a country than divides us. And if we focus on those things, then I think we'd be better off. And, 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 and it's almost like people are allergic to that. And, and I also believe that you know, we can disagree without being disagreeable. Right. This, this experiment called America worked because of the competition of ideas. And, and, and if we can't do that up here, if you know, our peers can't do that, then we're not gonna, our kids aren't gonna be able to do it, our grandkids aren't gonna be able to do it. So, so those are the things that, that I wish, that I, I, I have my ax to grind with, let's focus on what unites us, not divides us. I think it's a great point because um, if, if you're able to just look at someone in their politics and demonize them, mm -hmm. and not see them as a husband or wife or a father or a mother or a brother and a sister, you don't see the human side of who these people are, it's easier to put the tail and, and the horns on them. But if you actually get to know people, uh, listen, I would argue that most everyone here is pretty nice, Republican right. and Democrat. Right. They've come here for the right reason. Now, I might disagree with them, right. Um, but I also think that the media likes to report on things that separate us. So if you look at health care and taxes, I think it's going to be hard to find a lot of unity on those mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. issues. But on the issues that you're working on and so many of us in our own committees work on, there's a lot of agreement. But That's that nice. doesn't give you sexy stories to show great divide in America. And behind the scenes, though, I do see your point, people trying to actually work through issues because it, though Republicans control the House, the Senate, and the White House, if we're going to get things through the Senate, you need Democrat support because of the rules. Sure. And if we can bring Democrats in, um, we're far better off. So um, I throw some axes in my office. Okay. I got pictures of my kids. <laughs> right, right. But we, you know, we, we come to Washington to do the work of our constituents, but we always want things that remind us of, uh, mm -hmm. of home. What do, you, what do you bring with you that reminds you of who you are in your home state? Well, what, I, 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 think, I think one thing that I, I always I wear every day is my, 
my Aggie ring. Um, you know, Texas A&M is, right. is one of the largest universities in Texas in, in the country. Um, you know, A&M, our, our, our motto is Aggies not lie, cheat or steal, nor tolerate those who do. Um, it is, um, everybody has the same kind of ring and that's the one thing that connects you. I, when I was in the CIA, I was in Yemen once. And I get off the plane, I'm walking through Sana'a, and, and this is a pretty, pretty exotic place. And this guy walks up to me, he goes, hey, did you go to Texas A&M? What class were you? Right? And so he, he saw he, the ring? He saw, he saw the ring. So that's, that's one thing. And, and you know, so I, do all I, alum wear a ring? Do you all get one and go, we all, that, we all, all do. Aggies, we throw them on? We all do. We all what do. What do women wear? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's the same ring, but it's just a, just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit smaller. So... But it looks pretty much the same. So do, do the guys who marry an Aggie alum as well, like, get off with a cheap ring, but I give you my Aggie? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is some question about, does your Aggie ring go first and then your wedding ring, or does your ah, wedding ring first and then the Aggie? So has which been, is closest has to Has there been heart? a conclusion on that? <laughs> no, it's well, still, the uh, look, rage I, is on. Exactly. I, I'm unmarried, but I, I could see where a, a, a significant other, a, a wife, would be upset if um, that the wedding Aggies ring didn't go first. Just, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. Um, we all have heroes. Mm -hmm. In, in um, Wisconsin, Paul Bunyan is a larger-than-life figure. So sure. um, in the life of Will Hurt, who, who inspires you? Who's your larger-than-life person that you look up to that um, you try to emulate, that you think did a good job, that if you could just be a little bit like them, right. you'd be successful? Well, when you say it, the first thing that pops in my mind is, is my father. So my dad is 86 years old. My mom is 75. Uh, my, my dad's black, my mom's white, and they moved to Texas in uh, 1971. And it was still not in vogue to be an interracial couple yeah. in, in Texas at that time. Were they and, in the military? Uh, military? No, they no. weren't. My, my dad sold notions, which is like threads and zippers and buttons and okay. things. And so he was a traveling salesman across Texas. And he would go into some of these stores and people would be incredibly rude, say some nasty things to him. Mm -hmm. But he always said he had a PMA, a positive mental attitude. And that's something I heard a lot when I was a kid. That's something that I've embraced as, as a motto and always trying to stay positive uh, despite the craziness around you is something that my, my dad was able to do in, in a really tough, at a really tough time in our, in our, in our history. And if he can do it, I can do it. And, and he's someone that I think about you know, every single day. That's awesome. You look at um, someone who you can look up to and emulate. Um, it's the person that raised you, and obviously you did a great job because uh, you served your country well, um, and you've been a fantastic member of Congress. Um, I don't want to be too negative, but as, uh, as we go, our final chop, any complaints you have? Any criticisms? Um, concerns? Uh, yeah, I have, I have one criticism. Um, since this is the inaugural show, you should have had some cheese curds on here. But Dude, I you totally know, agree I'm with not, that. I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to put you on blast on, on, yeah, your, first, well, on your first show. Well, <laughs> so the second, the second guest will get cheese curds. So listen, Will, thank you for doing this with me, our launch of Plaidcast. Um, people can check us out on iTunes. They can also uh, come over on our Duffy for Congress page. That's where you can find me, Duffy for Wisconsin, actually. Where do people find you? Why do we we want to know more about Will Hurd. What uh, are your... Heard, heard for Congress uh, on the political side, and then a lot of my social media, I'm Heard on the Hill, H-U-R-D on the Hill. Heard on the Hill, uh, hanging out at podcast. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Give me a fist bump. All right, brother. Later, brother. Thank you. Yeah.